The ancient Greeks are most well known for creating democracy and modern medicine, but they also created other important concepts like trial by jury, free speech, individual rights, civilian control over the military, separation between religion and government, middle-class egalitarianism, and constitutional government. They also pioneered the study of mathematics, abstract geometry, trigonometry, biology, zoology, botany, astronomy, and atomic theory. Maps with latitude and longitude, the theory the Earth is round, measuring the Earth's circumference within 10% accuracy, the wheelbarrow, the crane, the pulley, the catapult, the lever, the steam engine, the thermometer, the odometer, indoor heating and plumbing, and the alarm clock. The Greeks were the first to stop Hitler's Axis forces and credited by the United States, Russia, and Great Britain with being essential to Hitler's defeat. They were unsurpassed in their courage, saving their Jewish community from the Holocaust. The Greeks have pioneered in so many ways for the greater good of humankind. They have showed courage throughout history and have been on the right side of history. What is their secret? Perhaps it is the idea of philotimo. What is philotimo? No other language is a word for this uniquely Greek term. It is considered a complex constellation of values that is difficult to define. All Greeks know it, even if they've never heard the word before, until now. It's hard to think of a word more packed with meaning, more packed with um, positive values than philotimo. It's a perfect word. Philotimo. I'd actually say uniquely Greek uh, concept. It seemed to sum up the best of the Greek character. It's a word that describes a way of life. Philotimia. It's a sense of how people feel towards humanity, fellow humans. The Greek spirit of doing what's right and what's honorable, even when one's own interests and maybe even one's own life are placed in peril. Whether it means you're going to earn less money, or whether it means that not everybody is going to love you. Philotimia means you're doing it based on your whole sense of duty. I believe philotimo is the most unique word that a human being has to express himself. The ancient Greeks were smart enough to come up with a word that described things that are subtle, that have nuances. It's not very easily translatable uh, unless you, you bring together many different elements. Duty, honor, courage, personal sacrifice, higher calling. Taking pride in their work. Compassion and generosity. It's about honor, it's also about knowledge. A duty to do what is right. To rise above pettiness and uh, trivialities. Human kindness, empathy. Humility and pride, love of family, love of country. And to think about uh, those that uh, maybe haven't been quite as fortunate. It is within the DNA uh, of Greeks and I think of humanity overall but it's something which has to be inspired. Most of us, and certainly in my case, I try to live up to the word as, as, as often as I can in my life. To live not just for yourself, but for something larger than yourself. All of these things embody um, not only the classical idea yields of the Greek people, but, but some of the attributes of the modern Greeks, including Greek Americans. If we live by these values, we will uh, do well and thrive. Philotimo comes from the two Greek words, philos, which means friend, and timi, which is honor. Philotimo could be translated as love of honor or respect for honor. It's love and honor, but it's not the honor about you, it's the honor within you that's inculcated generationally. Every once in a while, you're put to the test as to whether you have philotimo and how much philotimo you have. We derive our personal honor in significant measure for, for those things we engage in that are beyond our own self-interest. Honor, glory, the desire to be remembered motivated some of the most heroic acts in ancient Greek history. You find it in the great battles. You find it at the Pass of Thermopylae. They knew that they were going to die. There were 300 Spartans against all the Persians. But there was no greater glory than dying for their country, their way of life. They knew that they're going to pay a very heavy price, the heaviest price that you can ever pay, but they still did what they thought was the right thing to do. They figured out at a basic level that reciprocity, the act of ruling and being ruled by others, and doing it in a reciprocal way, it works. Each individual contributing to the whole of Greek society in the ancient world 
I think propelled all kinds of ancillary developments. It was a very fertile ground for critical thinking. Even after Rome conquered Greece, they really didn't conquer their uh, culture. Their culture conquered Rome. It carried over from the ancient Greeks through the Byzantine period into modern Greek culture today. Uh, and it is really a remarkable treasure uh, that has permeated every aspect of Western civilization uh, and really part and parcel of what makes up most of the democracies of the world now. Philotimo, as a composite and complex term involving decency, dignity, respect, honesty, truthfulness, sincerity. You might use the term in a motivating power for a child. Have the Philotimo of doing your homework. Or you might have something in a condition of philanthropy, philanthropic assistance, then there is in a question form, don't you have the philotimo to assist the people who are in need? In the New Testament, we have three times we have the usage of the term as a verb by St. Paul. One of them is very beautiful. He says, philotimume, I have this type of noble ambition to come to Rome, writing to the Romans, and even preach the gospel and elaborate the gospel to you. What God asked us to do is to give in others without asking for anything in return, but love and affection. Whenever you mention the word philotimo to a Greek, you're always going to see a softening of the eye. I was born and raised in Greece, so philotimo was a word that I heard all my life. My, my mother, my father would always talk about philotimo. My, my grandparents would always talk about philotimo. My parents, my sister, <laughs> my teachers, my classmates, everybody. My Greek background gave me strength of character. What does that mean? Don't pick on me, you're going to get a poke in the nose. <laughs> when I played the music very loud, and by doing so I was disturbing the neighbors, my father would say, don't you have any philotimo? Every time that you deviate from honorable and decent and dignified way of behaving and living, people will ask you, don't you have philotimo? If you don't act correctly, the community will look down on you. You don't only embarrass yourself, you embarrass your entire family. When you go outside of your home, you're not just going by yourself. You're taking the name of your father and your mother with you. That is a very unique aspect of, of our community and our culture. You feel as though you are accountable uh, much far beyond yourself, to your family, to your community, and to your history, your legacy. You can see Philotimo today during Greece's Great Depression. People rallied around each other and society kept its cohesion. I would actually call it an, a sort of a binding undercurrent of what unites Greeks around the world together. The great philosopher Thales, what he said that Philotimo is like you breathe. I went all over the country in 1987 asking Greeks to support me for mayor of San Francisco. There was only one reason they did it. It was out of Philotimo. Greeks pride themselves on being uh, very hospitable, very warm people. There is something within the Greek American subculture, something within Hellenism that has some magic to it. But what is it? Uh, nobody can put their finger on it. And I think the answer may be, it is Philotimo. Our group employs many thousands of people, but there are probably 40 or 50 people that, let's say, govern the group around the world. And we have contracts in place with few of them. What it means is, that the value of one's word is more than the value of one's contract. Philotimo. I was conscious of it every time I gave a speech, every time I had a press conference, every time I made a decision, every time I was in public, every time I was in private, I wanted to make my people proud. And for me, that emanates from Philotimo. We came penniless. We've been fortunate to come in a country where there are so many opportunities, and using our Philotimo, you really help us get ahead.
The Greeks that came here in the early 1900s were universally 100% of them poor and uneducated. Within one generation, they ranked among the top of Americans in terms of education and in terms of income. Greeks uh, around the world, both here and, and elsewhere, are accomplishing amazing things. With Philotimo playing in the background, I think there's a strong sense amongst the Greeks that we're pretty special people. In the great conflicts of the 20th century, World War I, World War II, and in the Cold War, Greece was always on the right side of history. When Mussolini asked Metaxa, the Greek prime minister, for free passage through Greece. Immediately, on the spot, three o'clock in the morning, he said, oi, no. It was his philotimo that made him say no. The response, oi, by the Greek people to the attack by fascist Italian army was based on philotimo was the first victory that the Allies had, and it was very, very spirited. That was a monumental demonstration of heroism, heroism that drove Churchill to say, it is not the Greeks that fight like heroes, it is the heroes that fight like Greeks. After trying to decimate the Greek community, they started going after the Jewish community. And you had some heroes like the Archbishop of Athens, Damaskinos. Including the mayor and bishop of the island of Saginthos. In 1943, the German military commander ordered Metropolitan Chrysostomos and the mayor of Zakynthos to prepare a list of the Jewish community on the island. His goal was to deport them to concentration camps in Poland. The order had already gone out that any Greek hiding a Jew will be executed on the spot. Instead of preparing such a list, the Metropolitan and the mayor went to the Jewish community on the island and sent them into hiding in the mountains or with Christian friends in the countryside. Metropolitan Chrysostomos and the mayor then returned to the German military commander with a piece of paper that contained only their two names. They told the commander it was the entire list of the Jewish community of Zakynthos. These two leaders embodied everything that that word tries to encapsulate. People risked their lives to protect people, and I think that that separates us to, to a certain degree uh, and identifies us with Philotimo. You think of the golden rule, uh, you treat others as, as, as uh, you would want to be treated. It embodies that rule, but then takes it almost to an even higher level, like almost reach beyond what you would expect or want for yourself and do even better. It really ultimately means what it is to live a good life. And I think it's extremely important that we make sure that the next generations realize that. We have to go to the next level and we have to act on it. All of us individually and inspire others to also do the same. I try to teach my kids that the way that they are remembered is the way that they treat others. Every transaction in life leaves an image in someone else's mind of who you are and what you value. We try to give our kids all the things that we never had. And sometimes we really should focus on giving them what we did have. This philotimo, this greatness, is within their DNA. And if they can better tap into this philotimo that their ancestors have used throughout time, they too can accomplish great things. Philatimo is about helping one another. Philatimo is important because it's what makes the world a better place.